I did not have sexual relations with that woman. Yes or no, did you ever take banned substances to enhance your cycling performance? Yes. I had no prior knowledge of the planned assault on Nancy Kerrigan. I am deeply sorry for my irresponsible and selfish behavior I engaged in. Good afternoon, everybody. I am Julio Gallerati. Welcome to Oops! The Podcast. I am joined here by my esteemed colleague, Francis Ellis. How are hey, you? Hey, Julio. Five o'clock shout doesn't connect. Who's our guest? <laughs> our guest today is the hilarious comedian. You know her. You love her. Mary Beth Barone, everyone. Hi, guys. Me, Mary Beth. Good How to are see you? you, Mary Beth. You sound clear and crisp. Okay. Let's hope it stays that way. I'm, I'm doing good. I'm in Connecticut. I'm at my parents' house. Wearing a Nike bodysuit, um, that's where we're at. The bodysuit's cool. sick. It looks it like uh, you can't really tell what it is. It's very like ambiguous from this angle. I could be. It looks like it could be a Nike gown. Mm. I wish if Nike makes a gown, I'll buy it. But for now, I'm stuck with the bodysuit, and then I have joggers that match, but I did not bring those home. So those are just collecting dust in my apartment with the rest of my stuff. Oh damn! Can you explain that to me? The body. I thought the bodysuit includes the pants. No, a bodysuit is just um, like a baby onesie, basically. It snaps at the bottom. Ah. That's, what's in, that, that's what a bodysuit entails. And then the pants are a separate item. Huh. Oh. They all snap at the bottom? Well, some don't. Like, I have a couple that don't, but then the, the, ba- the, the top is big, so you can step into it. And those ones are tough because when you pee, you have to just pull it to the side. Hmm. The She's old P to the side. I, I hooked up with a girl once who was wearing a bodysuit, and it was very erotic. I was surprised oh. at how much I enjoyed it. <laughs> I agree. Did it have snaps at the bottom? Or it, was it-, it did. It did. And I, at first, I didn't know what to do. I felt like I was undressing an infant, like changing a diaper. But um, we, I got over that pretty quickly. And uh, I'll tell you what. It. Yeah, it, we did. We did make it work. And it was fun to unfasten it and then sort of just pull it up over her head and yeah. Yeah. That does escalate quickly when there's a body suit involved because it's really just one piece of fabric and then vagina. You know, there's not yeah. sort of similar to underwear, but you don't have to, it's just, it's easy access, which can be dangerous at times, I will say. Mm. So you're rolling the dice hooking up in a body suit, but I'm glad it worked out for you. Yes. Me too. Me too. <laughs> I think uh, that's hot. I've always been into like my partner wearing the top half of an outfit and not the bottom half, whether it be a hoodie or a fleece or whatever mm. accessory, mm. I'm into it. So Mary Beth, as someone who is a, a voice, a leading voice on dating in this generation, how are you managing in this time? Are you seeing anybody? Have you got any leads? Tell us your, your process right now on Raya right now. So that's been, I've not been on dating apps in a really long time and I just got accepted onto Raya. So that's been nice as like a little distraction. Hmm. How have you found the men on there? Because I've heard a lot of women complain about the guys that are on Raya. I found them to be exactly what I thought they were going to be. It's not, I it's fine. I'll say it's fine. It's just like every other dating app, except some people you recognize stuff. But I will say that I have it on guys and girls on Ryan, and um, I've not matched a girl. I've hearted met many, not matched with a single one. Interesting. This is good. This there. is good stuff. Um, that's very, I, I didn't know that that was, is that a thing that you are typically into, like dating girls, or is this a new thing, or what's going on? It's relatively new. I dated a girl last summer for the first time and then kind of opened myself up to dating men and women. And that has been, it's very different dating men and women, but it's, both of them have um, positives and negatives. I I would be very curious to hear from a woman what the negatives are to dating women. I would say that having dated for so many years is, jarring to then date someone who wants to talk about stuff and like will tack and will kind of show up uh, and not flake on on plans and things like that which like those aren't negatives but it it was just very different it was a big shift from from going out with guys I think negatives would just be like um, always wanting to talk about feelings and things like that which <laughs> I was not used to and definitely caught me off guard 
Mm. Francis, that was a great question, man. Well, you, you hear every, everyone has talked about, you know, the downside, that their frustrations with dating members of the opposite sex. And I think to get a woman's perspective, yeah, is, is fascinating, um, you know, because I, to me, you have the most informed point of view if you've dated members of both sexes and, uh, and therefore you can kind of sympathize or empathize with some of the com complaints that men may have, but also, you know, you, you see it from both, both sides. I, I, I think, do you, do you think that, do you think that men are too quick to play the like, Oh, they're always trying to talk. She, you know, always sharing. Thing. <laughs> I think, I mean, it's just so different because I think women are more comfortable with women. So if I was talking a lot about my emotions with a woman I was dating, I wouldn't necessarily be that vulnerable with a man because I think they do tend to jump to things like all oh, she wants to talk about her feelings. So I think there is a balance, but like every person is like men and women are both. So I totally see like a straight guy's perspective um, when they're like well, this and that. But I think guys are like just more careless in general and like, I don't know. They always think everyone's trying to date them. Like every guy thinks that any girl they hook up with is just trying to like make him her husband. And that's just like, so not the case mm. in my funny. experience. That is really funny. I think there's a combination of things with that too. I think anytime a girl, t like there's some guys I know that anytime a girl looks at them, they're like, dude, did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> like, did you see the way? It's delusion. They're delusional, but it's there's so many nuances to it and i think it's like hard to capture modern day because there's a lot of subcultures of people and and i think there's a lot more people willing to experiment like sexually and and with gender and all that stuff so it's a good time to be figuring it out but yeah there's a lot of nuances to it so i i uh i have to say you know when obviously when sex comes into play it changes the equation but uh you mentioned guys thinking that every girl wants to date them and back when i was single it shocked me when women i, I was always i've still i'm always surprised when a woman is when i find out that a woman is interested in me <laughs> but why because because it just I, I don't know i remember what it was like being in fifth grade and fourth grade and sixth grade where i would like chase these girls around the playground and tell them i loved them and they would just like laugh in my face or you know having these crazy consuming feelings of, of young crushes and the torment of high school and it's not like I'm that far removed. It didn't shift overnight to being an equal playing field. Uh, so I've carried this with me. And yes, I, I have confidence, you know, in myself and especially with dating apps. Like if someone agrees to go on a date with you, you're like, okay, well they have to be at least somewhat interested. But uh, I, 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 especially when it like, when it would come to like, consummating it and, and and sleeping with somebody for the first time i would i would be astonished that that was happening every time i think that's probably i mean there's again there's balance like there's a healthy way of looking at it but i have just experienced the opposite of that where i remember specifically i hooked up with a comedian and after i mean we didn't even have sex i think i gave him a blow thing and afterwards I so like when I see you at shows just don't be weird and he was like well we're not like engaged and I was like wait what <laughs> why would you jump to that I'm just saying a fucking freak you know what I mean mm -hmm. and it's just like I think that like freaked him out and made him think I was like trying to make it like a serious relate it's just the things I've seen yeah it's hard out here was he older than you he was a little bit older, but not like, he wasn't like 40. I think he was right. in his early 30s and I was 27 maybe. Okay. Um, I think being surprised a woman wants to sleep with you is probably the healthy side of that, where it's like, you should appreciate it and honor that. 
and women are so beautiful. It's like any guy that gets to sleep with one, I think should just feel really lucky. Mm. I agree with that. Yeah. Not always. They're not, they're not always, you know what I mean? And that goes both ways. I'll tell you that. I mean, <laughs> sure. <laughs> support, support. <laughs> I've noticed that like I've heard so many stories about comedians I know being fucking weirdos when it comes to stuff like this. Um, Mm -hmm. And you're just like, what? And a lot of the time it's been when a younger female comedian that I know dates like, or hooks up with an older comedian guy. They, and I just hear some of the weirdest fucking stories and I, maybe it's a coincidence, but um, the comedian, comedian on comedian stuff can be bizarre. Mm. Well, I think how in the priesthood, they're all pedophiles. It's like, are they all pedophiles because they're priests or does the priesthood attract pedophiles? It's like, right. <laughs> are comedians emotionally unavailable because they're comedians or com- do oh, emotionally unavailable people want to be comedians? I mean, it's just like, I don't know the science behind it, but I know comedians have been some of the worst people I've ever hooked up with. Yeah. Right. Which leads me to ask, do you have some sort of policy now about comedians because of your past encounters? <laughs> You know, I should, but I'm an optimist and a romantic at heart. And I think I don't have like hard and fast rules. There are some comedians I would never hook up with again because I've already done it. And I know that um, it's not going to serve me. But I think I'm sure there are good comedians out there. I I have friends who are in comedy couples and they seem to be happy and healthy. But I think I just go for the bad ones for some reason. Mm. Uh, tales old as time i hear that spirit yeah now now mary beth i want to return really quickly to the uh the dating girls dating guys uh situation because um i want like you know you maybe you haven't had enough of a sample size of women yet to answer this but uh do you see yourself settling down eventually with someone and do you right now think that the odds are higher that that person would be a man or a woman? So I definitely have not dated that many women because it's only been, it's been less than a year. So I, I, I probably don't have a big enough sample size, but based on the data I have collected, I think sexually I am open to men and women, but if I were to settle down, I don't, well, I think settling down is also for me kind of like a weird concept because I don't really feel like I want to do that. Like I want to be in a healthy dynamic with someone without necessarily feeling like held back by them or that I'm making sacrifices. Do I long term that will probably be with a man? Statistically speaking, yes, probably it will be, but I'm open to both. And I think if, you know, I don't want to like make a blanket statement that all women are super emotional and all we want to do is talk to That's just been my experience thus far. And um, so, yeah, I think, you know, I picture myself in 10 years. Is it with a man or a woman? Probably with a man, but that's based on, like most dating experience has men. So that's like what I picture for myself. Got it. Right. right. That was a very pragmatic answer. Very math, math heavy. Yeah, I wonder, I, like... It women in STEM. You know, they say it can't be done, but <laughs> it can be done. <laughs> um, I feel like this is... So it seems like you have a very good inner dialogue with this kind of stuff. And I wonder if you have run into situations where people that you're dating are intimidated by that. Well, I've been in therapy for years, and that's kind of how I've gotten to a place where I can process my feelings and verbalize them. I do think I'm very honest and upfront with people about what I'm looking for. And you would think that that would benefit relationships, but a lot of times I think it does freak people out, which I'm not going to change who I am. Like I'm just upfront with people and I like to be open about my feelings. So I think even though sometimes I've been open with people and they haven't responded well and I've continued hooking up with them, I don't want to change my approach because that's just who I am um, for better or worse. I've definitely had situations I've told something and then they will just like completely disregard it and do what they want to do anyway. Like I I can get more specific if you want, but it's just people. Yeah. I don't know if it's just comedians don't want to be told what to do or it's been so many comedians last four years. That's, that's what I'm basing things off of. (laughs) 
<laughs> Let me tell you something. Here's the thing, okay? I I would never date. I don't think I would date a comedian. And and I'll qualify that and say man or woman. Mm-hmm. Uh, I I just think that as a comedian, I benefit from having someone on the outside who has a little bit more perspective on how to live a happy life and doesn't need that nightly validation from a crowd of people uh, to, to balance me out. And I do think there is a, yes, a like-mindedness among comedians where you'll find somebody you date and they, they understand you better, they understand your needs and whatnot, but I've also found that even just sitting at a table with comedians, a lot of the time the conversation is not a conversation, but rather a series of one-upsmanship. Who can tag on top? Who can end with the funniest joke? It's insane sufferable people don't laugh they don't stay in the moment there's no there's no listening it's just like when's it my turn and 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 on a smaller scale that's sort of what we do for a living right all we do is wait for our turn to speak that's what we do in green rooms that's what we do in the wings of theaters we are just waiting for our turn to hold the microphone so I, I am. I always applaud comedian couples that make it work. Tom Segura and uh, Christina and uh, Rich Voss and uh, oh boy, uh, Bonnie. Bonnie Bonnie McFarland. She's so great. Uh, but I I also am not surprised when when comic relationships end in flames. Well, here's my problem. I mean, I have so I feel like. I don't see my dating someone who like works in finance and like comes over after work. We watch Netflix and then he gets up in the morning and puts a suit on and goes to work. Like I just don't see my, I've, I've had that relationship where it was very like, you know, cookie cutter. And I, I lived with my boyfriend who I dated before I started me. And I think I had like kind of a future mapped out before I started doing comedy and that kind of all went to shit because I decided I wanted to do this instead. But I just feel like dating a normie or a civilian is just not something I can picture myself doing at this point. And I don't know why I just have like a mental block against that kind of like routine lifestyle that I don't know. I mean, obviously what, you know, dating comics is not the answer, but I don't know. Do you, what do your girlfriends do for work? Like, how do you so my, my girlfriend has a very, that sort of job schedule. She, she works, uh, you know, nine to five situation. Um, and I like it a lot. I like the contrast between our lifestyles. Uh, you know, we're very supportive of each other. And it's not one of these things where it's just her supporting me and it's all about me. Like I am really interested in her career too. And I love hearing about it. And she's really ambitious. And I, I as a comedian, I always assumed that people who did that were settling but they're not necessarily, you know what I mean? And quite frankly, I think she probably chose a much better route than I did. And it's unlikely that I will ever make more money than her. Also. <laughs> no matter how well I do, I'll have to be crushing it. Yeah. Um, but she's a great, and I, you know, I get along with her great and she's funny and fun. And I like, I like being able to present her with my ideas and not have her give me back like that comedian peer feedback. Yeah, yeah. that can be weird for sure. So I don't know, Francis, what about you? I, I, I totally agree. I, I, my girlfriend works uh, in software sales and she has a very good job. And it's, uh, it's definitely clear to me that, and I've made this joke before that if we were to get married, you know, I would go on to her company's healthcare plan. I mean, there would just be so many benefits for me uh, in, in tying the knot. But, um, Beyond that, yes, her leaving the house at 8.30 in the morning and then returning at 5 or 6 p.m. just as I'm sort of, maybe we'll have a quick dinner and then I head out to do spots. She'll come to shows when they're fun and worth coming to, but it doesn't, it's not, there's no, she doesn't need to be there. Um, She doesn't feel the need to become friends with my friends. There is a definite kind of different world of understanding that comedians and comedy clubs are my workspace and her 
company where she goes to work as her workspace and yeah, we'll meet each other's friends and whatnot, but there's a sovereignty to that, which I, I, I find kind of uh, healthy. And to Julio's point, to, to, I, I actually have grown to really trust her opinion on material and, you know, she'll laugh if it's funny and she won't laugh if it's not as opposed to like me telling a comedian a joke and then wondering, you know, are they not laughing because they thought of something similar or they have a better version of it? Their wheels are turning. You can see this like fucking crazy machine start kicking into gear of how can I top this? How can I, whatever. And, and so that, that, that's so relaxing to be around that yeah. honest feedback about what you're saying. I'm curious because I've seen this pop up a couple times in the last few months. What would you guys do if your girlfriends were like, so I'm going to an open mic? Great question. I've seen this come up so me too. much recently. Me too. It's bizarre to me. And I'm not, I am not throwing shade. I'm not judging anyone. I cannot imagine dating a comedian and being like, I want that life. I cannot imagine doing that. I, respectfully, I, I disagree with that. I do see the allure. You know, if you, if you come to these comedy clubs and you see people clapping for your significant other, like there are, and, and you watch them crush, let's say like who, who wouldn't want that? But what they're not seeing is the misery and the, the years of open mics and all the shit, you know, that, that sucks to get there. Um, but my girlfriend has definitely made a couple of comments recently after she'll say a funny joke or come up with a funny idea and be like, you know, maybe I should try it. And <laughs> she knows that it just sends a chill down my spine of like, ah, yeah, you should get on stage. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you should totally do that. <laughs> you know, it's funny. I think about this a lot because I've been around long enough now that I've seen this happen so many times. And even with people who are now like comedians who stuck with it and, you know, but there are, there are telltale signs it's about to happen. One of them is if they come a lot to shows. Like after that, like per first period, the, the like honeymoon phase, if they are continuing to come after and kind of like, you can just see it simmering. You can see those people who are going to do it. And then yeah. it's really a weird thing to watch happen. Yeah. Dude, if I went to see my girlfriend play like co-ed roller hockey 25 times and I was just enjoying it so much, there's no chance that I wouldn't want to strap on some skates and get out there myself. Totally. I understand why that people want to participate. But I think that for me, there's no scenario where that goes well, right? Either the girlfriend or the boyfriend resents the fact that they can never catch up to you and doesn't understand why you're sort more successful than they are, or they do catch up to you and surpass you. And then you're like, what the fuck? I've been at this for years. Uh, you owe your success to me. Yada, yada. Like that's, I just don't see, I don't know how that works. I think it's dicey, but I applaud couples that are able to make it work. I think that would be, uh, I would struggle with that a lot. I think that if that happened to me, but mm. it's so complicated. Things. It's very complicated, especially yeah. because comedy is such like a thing I hate to love. So I just think like, and I feel like very protective of it. If my partner wanted to just in and be like, yeah, this looks so fun. And it's like, well, it looks fun. Good at it. And I've been on it and it's, I've given up so much to do it. So yeah, I hope, I hope I'm easy, but then also don't do it though. Mm. You know, <laughs> I hear you. Hey, Mary Beth, I want to ask you about some of your Instagram posts. I, I'm happy to talk about them. So you are an artist of, is it okay to call them thirst traps? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. You, you are fair. not, you do not shy away from posting the thirst, the odd thirst trap here and there. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's sort of a, there, I find them to be different than, you know, the sort of more, most basic, uh, like bikini, whatever thirst trap picks that you see. You, there's, there's a, there's an edge to your thirst traps, a, like a, almost like a, an intensity. I, I, I don't know. You know, sometimes it's like half erotic, half 
you know, fearful. Like I'm a little afraid if I'm honest. Mm-hmm. What are your, you going for? What is your process behind the thirst traps? Can I add something to this before you answer? Sure. I have a, a, sim- a kind of related perspective. When I, I love your posts. I, they feel sincere to me and unapologetic in a way that makes them like, all, like I'm like, oh, that's a great post when I see it. I'm like, that's fucking, that's, this girl knows like <laughs> who she is and she's representing herself so well and it's great. Thank that's, you. You're welcome. Um, I mean that. That's the, I mean, so it's, been a journey with me and uh, thirst traps and, you know, an even longer journey with me and my body image. And I think I realized where I was just like, you know what, I'm not going to look like this forever. And I, you know, my body's not perfect. There are things I would change, but I want to be able to look back on this time and be like, yeah, I did like, I put it out there. I have nothing to apologize for. I feel like we live in a time where women can do this. And I think like my thought process behind them. And even the other day when I posted one, I had taken other thirst traps earlier in the day and I I could just feel my heart wasn't in it. I felt like I needed to post one, not that I wanted to post one. So I took I took a bunch of pictures of myself in like a, a teddy, a lace bodysuit. I was sitting in front of the mirror on the floor. And you know what? I looked at them and I just said, this is it's just not me today. And then later that night, I was about to brush my teeth and I said, I'm going to give this one more try. Put on the Calvin Klein's, a, a black bra, and I got the shot, you know, but I had to, I had to try it out earlier in the day and decide that that wasn't the vibe that I wanted. So I think I do put a lot of thought into them. And like, obviously, you know, you don't want them monotonous. So you have to find a new bathroom or a new mirror or a new <laughs> body position. I don't post a lot of butt pics. So the one from Sunday was um, a departure, I would say. But I just feel like it's my Instagram. And like, this is what I want to put out there. I want to have it be jokes and thirst traps and fashion those are like my interests so i that's what i want to bear and i've gotten <clears throat> well the comments are becoming progressively funnier with the more followers i get like, <laughs> i find them so entertaining and they're generally positive so i mean knock on wood the incels haven't found me yet and hopefully they they will stay away but i just feel like people comment on them and they're like your thirst traps are so like artful like blah 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 and it's like yeah I, that's good i'm glad that that's how they're being perceived because i do feel like they're like capturing this moment in time where i can have it both ways i can like put sexy pictures up and be funny which i'm mm. thankful for that's true 100%. That's great. Now, my my question would be, do you think that men can post thirst traps in any acceptable way? Let's say who guys who aren't models or, you know, w- for whom it would it would extend their brand to do so. Well, I'm sure there's people who think that that female comedians shouldn't be doing that either. Like they're like I'm here for the jokes and fuck is this this is your butt. But I think it is really hard for guys. Gay guys can do whatever they want. There's no sure. rules there. That's gay privilege. But straight guys, I do think it's hard to be able to pull off a thirst trap where, like, I can be pouting in a thirst trap and it's fine. But if a guy posts, like, a super self-serious thirst trap, I just, it's, it's, hard, it's hard to pull off. I think there are ways of doing it, you know, if you're with the boys or you're at the beach or, you know, you're in a specific circumstance. I think it's hard to take like a mirror selfie as yeah. a guy and post that. I'm and just not writing this there. down with the boys. Yeah. At the beach. <laughs> with the boys. Maybe you have like a, a natty light in your hand or something, natty. you know, it's more of like a social thing where it's just like, oh, I happen to look hot here. It's more... I think it's easier to get away with if it's like, yeah, I just, I'm looking hot in this photo. It's not necessarily just about the thirst, but yeah, it's, it's a, it's a difficult balance. And I do try to, you know, even though they are like, I'm being serious, like I'm presenting my body in this way. I do try to make them funny in some way sometimes, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, So yeah, I don't envy a straight guy trying to post thirst traps. That is tough, tough territory to be in. Hard out here for a pimp. So, G, what do you think? Well, um, I don't know. This this is a separate thought. 
Um, I don't know if that's okay if I've transitioned here. This is going to be controversial, potentially. Francis, tell me if you agree with this. Mary Beth, I don't know why, but I feel like we look like we're related. We could definitely, we could definitely be cousins for sure. You look like my cousins. Like I'm not even. I have cousins who look like you. I feel like. <laughs> And I don't know what if that's if that's weird of me to say or if that's me giving myself a compliment by saying that I look like you. I don't know if I if that's way, thank you. You're welcome. Um, but what do you think, Francis? I think I think that makes sense, but I also think, you know, anyone with like dark features and uh yeah, I, I, maybe maybe that that's just kind of it's as simple as that. I don't know. I'd have I to see your cousin. I think similar cousins. jaw, though. I feel like similar, like shape and stuff. And I feel, yeah. And honestly, I, this is getting very specific. <laughs> your, your nose is is in my family. Wow. Specifically, I see you, and I I always think that you look like like I, there's this familiarity that's really weird. What's happening here? Do I need to be here? I, I, what? I'm being serious. Just go away. I mean, I, I was going well, to I'm myself. Italian, so I mean, it's, right. it it makes sense. Do you know where your family's from? Um, my dad's family's from Urbino, which is like a town in the mountains of Italy, which we I've been to, but it's like very small. My family's from the mountains too. I'm not okay. joking. Just Maybe saying. we could do a DNA test and see if there's some connection in the, yeah. in my, the family my, tree. My family's from the from the the, the the water, the water, the lowlands. They're the marsh bog boglands. <laughs> well, what's crazy, Francis, is that I know your cousin. That's I used right. To work with Cousin at my first job when I dropped out of college. Phineas is his name. Phineas. Phineas Ellis. Yeah. And That's Phineas also has red hair, but it's weird because nobody in his parents or family that side of it had any red hair. So it, it almost was an anomaly that he and I would look somewhat similar and given you that do. we were yeah. similar coloring and all that. Yeah. Hair. You have a cousin with the same hair whose name begins with an F and ends with an S? Begins with pH, pH. pH. motherfucker. Like the acidic scale, um, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> wait, Mary Beth, you dropped out of college? I didn't know this. Yeah, I dropped out of college. Uh, I dropped out of Boston College after sophomore year. Cause I went to Coachella and I did LSD and I saw Kanye West and I said, you know what? I was sitting there in the big crowd and I thought, I'm unhappy at school. This is a lot of money to spend to be unhappy. So I'm going to take a semester off and just maybe transfer schools. And then I ended up getting a job at a start and um, I just decided not to go back. And then four years later, living in New York, started doing comedy. So it, I didn't drop out to be a stand up. That just kind of happened. Wow. Cool. How did your family react to that? Well, I have, I'm the youngest of six kids. And so I think that benefited me a little bit because my parents just want us to be happy. And they've seen all the different, you know, roads my siblings have taken. And they didn't feel I was throwing my future away if I didn't go back, which mm -hmm. Supportive. Do you, do you, is there any part of you that wishes that you'd completed your degree? Not once for a single second. Wow. That's Especially amazing. Especially now doing First comedy because like it yeah. really doesn't matter. Yeah. Yes. You know, it's funny. I, I, I want to say this. Uh, people often make fun of me and they say, you know, I can't believe you went to Harvard and now you're a stand up comedian. And, you know, or, or especially when I was at Barstool, they would be like, look, at you, you went from Harvard to writing at Barstool. Like, that's so pathetic. What a drop off. I studied English as my secondary and yeah. did so much writing in college. And I genuinely believe it was the most vital training that I could have had for what I do now as a writer, as a comedian. Uh, I think it was much more relevant than my friends who were in finance who studied econ. Um, well, I think also at a very basic level as a comedian, everything you did before you became shaped who you are as a comic. So like you going to Harvard and completing your degree, having that experience is the same as like, 
that's that's as important as me dropping out. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was a comic. Totally. That was what I needed to do. Um, and that's shaped a lot of like, you know, my points of view now. So I don't, I mean, I think, you know, you don't need to provide a diploma to do an open mic, but I think you going to Harvard for four years, obviously, I mean, going to Harvard is like a thing. I mean, it's like, it kind of, def- it doesn't define people in a way, but it's like, that's part of who you are is that you yeah. go to Harvard. Yeah. It's the first thing I tell people if I have the chance. (laughs) Yeah. Sometimes I think that's I think that's great. (laughs) Well it's funny we all went to school in Boston. Where'd you go? I went to Boston University. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well but the funny thing about BC and that they don't tell you is that it's actually not in Boston. And so when I thought I was going to school in Boston, I I felt very into that it was actually forty minutes from Boston. Right. What's it? What's it called again? This town that it's in? Chestnut Hill, right? Mm-hmm. It's at the yeah. very end of the subway yeah. line. The T. Yeah. The T, the good old T. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. It's amazing how that works. Like it it's just far enough away from the stuff in Boston that it's a it's a real occasion to do it. Which means you don't do it regularly where BC is located. Yeah. It's it a much more traditional not- college. Yeah, it, I thought I wanted to go to college and be an English teacher and get married and stuff. And so when I when I had that future in mind for myself, it made sense. But then when I realized I didn't want to be an English teacher, that was like the place I wanted to be. It was It's just like, ugh. I, I mean, I could get into it, but I just, it wasn't the right fit for me. Mm. I, I Mary Beth, this what, sorry, life. Francis, what were you going to say? Well, I wanted to ask a different question. So you go ahead. Well, I was I was going to ask because I know that we talked about this, but you said that maybe you have a couple of noteworthy oopses that you were worried were going to kind of affect the trajectory of your life in some capacity. And I was curious oh, yeah. about that. Here we go. I will list and I'm not going to get too specific, but obviously, you know, I, I mean, I spoke about it. Comedians in a way are my coworkers now, but prior to being a comedian, I had a streak of ups. And one of them was with a C-level executive. And I, I mean, it was the type of thing where we go to work happy hour. And then one thing led to another. We went out. We, um, we made out. We went back to his apartment. And then at like four in the morning, I said, I should go home. You know, we shouldn't take this any further. And then he did not speak to me for the rest of my duration at the company. And I for sure that it was going to be like a downfall there and I for sure that it stunted my growth for a time but then I was just working really hard and doing a good job and they couldn't deny me like promoted and stuff so I definitely happened well immediately after it happened I I didn't think it was going to be a big deal but then um when I saw it kind of impacting me negatively I was like oh fuck like made this stupid impulse decision and now I'm screwed you know Hundred percent. In the end, did you ever sort it out with that guy? I mean, did you know how did it? Did you end up leaving the company? How did it? How did it go? I ended up leaving, not because of that, obviously, but I have run into him on the street twice since that happened, and it's very cordial. But I would say it was probably one of the weirder things that's happened because he was like twice my age, basically. I think mm-hmm. that people at that age could handle themselves in that did not appear to be the case in practice. So I had to be the mature one. I definitely made some mistakes. I told way too many people about it, (laughs) but I was like upset. You know, I was like a woman scorned and I was young, so I just didn't know any, but it was not the move I would say. Hmm. It's funny. I I only became familiar with the term C level executive recently um through my girlfriend talking about that i I used to when i would hear that before i always thought that was like the third tier of executives oh like (laughs) yeah like well you know keep working and you'll be hooking up with a level executives before you know it um yeah i know c in the in the business they make their own rules and c is the top it's as high as we go it's pretty so i thought why not and then after that I hooked up with other coworkers, and and that was I know sometimes I don't learn from my mistakes Mm. and I think then you know 
you you just have to wait a little bit long and, and make those mistakes and then and then you having said that like you know before I said I don't have a rule against hooking up with comedians so am I really learning I don't but I am in a good place now if that means anything that's fantastic, Mary Beth. And, and it, I guess, you know, there is that old saying of don't dip your pen in the company ink. But I guess for women, it would be don't let the company pens be dipped into your ink your or ink. something. Um, <laughs> and it's good, that, it's good that you're in a good place. Oh, man. Uh, we should stop there. That was really fun. Great. Um, yeah. Mary Beth, hang in there, huh? Where where can everybody find you? You can on Twitter at Mary Beth Barone and I have a website marybethbarone.com that would usually list show dates which are not happening anytime soon and you can also follow Drag His Ass on Instagram which is a little meme account I run for my live show um, and thanks guys for having me it was so fun yeah, super fun you. you're the best uh, yeah, you're that's best. Mary Beth Barone everyone send your oopses to oopsthepodcast at gmail.com follow our Instagram at oopsthepodcast I'm Francis Ellis he's Julio Gallarati we'll see you next week ciao